This Could Happen to You, episode 127. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, Moshe Amsel, and today I'm going to bring to you a different style, different kind of episode than I normally do, deviating from uh, the usual course of business and talking about uh, law firm growth. And I want to talk about uh, a topic that uh, is it's near and dear to me because uh, you see, our, my mission uh, here at Profit with Law and actually the parent company, Dream Builder Financial, is to empower all people with, with wealth creation so that this and future generations can lead a better life. And that mission statement is rooted in a uh, you know a story of you know my grandfather and how he came over during the World War II uh, to the U.S. from uh, Nazi Germany, and uh, just him and his father survived. The rest of the family perished in the Holocaust, and they came with nothing. And uh, my great grandfather uh, was a businessman and got together with some of his relatives, they bought a piece of real estate in Manhattan, that real estate appreciated, they accumulated some wealth. And then my grandfather uh, went ahead, uh, my grandfather and grandmother, but she passed away a number of years ago, and he continued this, went ahead and, and funded a down payment for the first time home purchase of all of their grandchildren, uh, as well as uh, private school education. And, um, really very generous. And, and re- being the recipient of that generosity is really what opened my eyes to what's possible when you have money. What what are the things that you can do when you have money? And ultimately, money is a tool. Uh, it's a tool to get you what you want. It's a tool to survive. But it's also a tool to be able to change the world. And you can do it in so many different ways. Um, there's a lot of fun ways that you can do it when you have money. Even when you don't have it, you can still do it. You can still have fun with it. You know, for example, if you're sitting in a restaurant and uh, you get to talking to the waiter or waitress and you find out that, you know, they're a single parent or they, you know, they're working two jobs to, to make ends meet uh, or whatever their story is and you leave, uh, you know, very sizable tip, you know, like a hundred dollar tip to brighten their day, to help them along their way. Now, maybe you're not in the position to do that. Uh, but if you are, uh, you know, you can drastically change somebody's uh, week, month. You, you don't know how far that dollar can travel for that other person and what kind of impact that you're going to have. And it's not just the money. It's also the, the, the feeling and the appreciation and the gratitude that somebody will feel. Uh, but there's other things. I mean, I, uh, somebody who I look up to in, in business started a non-for-profit that builds schools in uh, various places in, in Africa where there are entire villages that were uprooted uh, because of political warfare and political um, climate, they were literally uprooted from their village and planted somewhere else. And he goes and builds schools for the kids in these villages. Uh, Obviously, he raises money from uh, other well-to-do entrepreneurs. But, you know, I've been involved in uh, those fundraising projects. And and the, the amazing things that you can do with philanthropy, uh, and with and with just uh, you know reaching out and helping out to somebody, uh, so that's uh, the first thing that I that I just want to give as a little bit of an introduction on where I'm going with this, and then the second thing is is you know my number one core value is family, and I talk about it a lot. Uh, you know I'm a father of five, and um, I'm married, and and I wouldn't do you know there's nothing that I wouldn't do for my kids. 
even the business that I'm building, I'm building it in a way that I can focus on my children. I want to be able to give them the attention they deserve. And I also want to be able to give them the future they deserve. So not only am I building wealth to be able to be philanthropic, to be able to change the world, to be able to put money behind some of the things I'm passionate about, but I also want to change my children's future and and not my you know not just my children i don't want to just give a handout to my kids but i want to have something to to leave that will last for generations that will go to my great grandchildren my great great grandchildren um literally changing the trajectory of of their lives by allowing them each to get a piece of something that i have built and because of this passion for uh, my love and caring for family. Uh, This particular story that I found out from my friend Mark Homer at GNGF is heart-wrenching. And the reason that I am highlighting this is because, you know, this person was uh, was in the legal community. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to read you from their GoFundMe page. This is the Roland family out in Colorado. On Friday, August 14, Joe and Jocelyn Rowland were senselessly murdered in Aurora, Colorado. They leave behind five sweet children. Anyone who knew Joe and Jocelyn would remember they were always the first to help. They were the best people you could know, and their door was always open to friends and family. We would like to raise money for their children. No amount of money can replace what they've lost, but maybe we can pull together and provide some financial security for them. Thank you for any amount you can contribute, whether large or small. Please share as well. And I'm going to use this story as a jumping off point to talk about, you know, what if this happened to you? But before I do that, uh, I want to appeal to my listeners, to my dedicated community of profit with law constituents. And I would like to see our, our community show up in force. And, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to see us do you know, a minimum of $20,000 of donations to these five kids. And uh, it's it's heart-wrenching to think of what they're going through and what they have to go through uh, having lost both parents. And, you know, not even, it's not, it's, it's not even like they got into a car accident. You know, they, they were killed. Um, now, I don't know the whole story, but, you know, it, it, it's awful uh, that something like this could happen. And then something like this did happen. And, you know, these five kids didn't deserve it. uh, You know, and they should, at the very least, have the means to be able to get past it. Let me tell you, when, you know, my when I found out my ex-wife was an alcoholic and and had been abusing my kids, not not physically, but emotionally, you know, leaving them home alone at night while she went out uh, on the town drinking. You know, one of the things, uh, one of the stories that really sticks out in my in my mind is m- my kids telling me, um, you know, that it was three o'clock in the morning. They were waiting for their mother to come home, and they called her cell phone, and the cell phone was answered by a taxi driver. She had left the phone in a taxi cab, and they had no idea where she was. She had forbidden them to call me, so they weren't able to call me to tell me they were freaked out, uh, and that's the kind of stuff that they had to go through. Uh, so when I found out about this and, and, and got custody of my kids. And, um, you know, the first thing that I did was to try to do damage control and I started taking them to therapy. And let me tell you to get a good therapist, there is no insurance for that. Uh, you know, most, and I don't want to put down therapists in general who take insurance, but most therapists who take insurance are not very good. Um, the reason is because insurance reimbursement doesn't isn't um, isn't very good. So when somebody is good enough that people will seek them out, regardless of whether they accept insurance or not, they stop accepting insurance. And therefore, in the world of of uh, of therapists, most therapists are you know pay cash out of pocket. And when I had three kids in therapy, it was more expensive than than child support. And, um, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I wouldn't wish the, the, you know, kids going through that, um, you know, but just therapy alone is, you know, uh, ridiculously expensive. And these kids are going to need lots of it if they're going to be able to, to get through this. Um, you know, and that's just one, 
little drop in the bucket of what their future holds for them. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to challenge you to donate a minimum of $100. Some of you might be taking offense at me naming a price tag, and maybe some of you can do a lot more than that. But I would like to see um, at least 200 people in my community donate $100, which would mean that we have donated collectively $20,000. Now, if we hit that $20,000 goal, I personally am pledging to give 10% on top of that. So I will do $2,000 um, on top of that 20. And, um, and additionally, I will be giving away. So I run a 90-day law firm turnaround group coaching program. And that coaching program uh, costs um, close to 7500 bucks to join. And um, I'm going to be giving away a seat to the 90-day law firm turnaround to one winner. Now, in order to qualify, in order to win, all you need to do is donate $100. And uh, when you make the donation, just take a screenshot of your confirmation of that donation. Email it to info at uh, dreambuilderfinancial.com, info at dreambuilderfinancial.com. Uh, let them know that this is your donation for the Roland family, and um, you'll be entered into this giveaway. I'm going to be giving away uh, one spot in the 90-day program. Uh, maybe we'll give away some other stuff as well. Now, I don't know when you donate if you can leave a note um, of some kind, uh, but if you can, I believe you can. You can leave a comment when you donate. So when you can leave whatever comment you'd like, but I would, I would appreciate it if at the end of the comment, you can just put hashtag profit with law or profit with law podcast or something like that so that we, we can try to track on our end what, what we did as far as donations as a community. You know, I, I, I don't know that anybody, everyone's going to email me their donation. Uh, so at least this way we can go on that GoFundMe page and check it out. So it's profitwithlaw.com forward slash for the kids, profitwithlaw.com forward slash for the kids. That'll forward to the GoFundMe page. It's an easier URL to remember. We'll link that up in the show notes uh, of this episode. And, you know, I, my heart goes out to this family and you know maybe i'm thinking too small you know maybe if if you know if, if i appeal i mean there's four, probably four or five thousand people you know in my direct community my email list listening to the podcast following me on social so an email is going to go out the same time that this episode is released posts will go out on social and you know maybe we can do way more than 200 people you know maybe we can raise $100,000 for them. It's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility. So, um, it, you know, if, if your heartstrings were tugged with this story, if you, you know, can part with a hundred bucks, you know, this, it, it would, it would, it, that hundred dollars can go a long way in helping these kids out five children and, and they're, you know, they're young kids they've got their whole life ahead of them and they're going to have to do it without the guidance of their parents. Now, Jocelyn, uh, Roland was a, um, an admin, uh, marketing manager for a law firm in Colorado. She's been in, in, in our industry for many years. Uh, many people know her from conferences. I have not personally met her. Um, but I know, uh, Mark Homer from GNGF, he and I had a conversation about it and I know that, uh, they were, uh, close friends with her and, um, you know, really knew her well. And, uh, you know, this, these were good people, this, the Roland family, they were just good people. And, uh, don't deserve to, to be going through this. So uh, at this point in their fundraiser, there's been 559 donors. Let's, let's double that number for them. Let's just let's skyrocket what they've, what, they've, uh, what they've raised and make a difference in their lives. Now, that is my appeal to you, and hopefully you join me with that. I'm going to switch gears now, and I'm going to talk about the fact that this could happen to any of us. Anybody can die in any way, shape, or form. We're not invincible, and our lives can be short. They can be long. They can be painful. They can be easy. Uh, we don't get to control that stuff. And the only thing that we do control or we can control 
is what we leave behind for our family. What kind of preparation have you done for that possibility? And remember that this is a situation where both parents died in the same act, the same instant, right? So uh, it's not like there's one parent left to, to kind of pick up the slack. They know what's going on with the other parent. If there aren't instructions left, if there is not details left, there's all kinds of mess that can be left behind of, of, uh, that needs to be handled. Everything from who's going to take care of these five kids to, uh, and they might have a great family system. They might have a great, uh, you know, way to, to have this taken care of and have this handled. Um, you know, they might have a great support network, but you know, what if they don't, or what if they, they have such a good support network that the siblings or the parents can't agree on who's going to get these kids, who's going to raise these kids. And now it's a fight. And now it's something that ends up get, needing to get duked out in court or something like that. Um, you know, so first thing is, you know, who's taking care of the kids? Who's going to raise your kids if you're not around, if something happens to you? And we all think we're invincible. We all think that it's not going to happen to us. It happens to somebody else. Or we know the risk. We know that, that it's a possibility, but we don't prioritize it. It's just one of those things that we just don't get to. So number one, you know, who's going to take care of the kids? What's going to happen to the kids? What kind of education do we want them to have? What kind of upbringing do we want them to have? Make sure that they're going to people who are going to love them, who are going to do what you want as far as how they raise them. You know, if you want to put them through private school, if you want to, if you want them to go to college and not have to struggle their way through and work two jobs to be able to pay their, their, their college tuition or start off their life with a mortgage payment of college debt, you know, maybe there, there needs to be some money put aside for them. Now, most people can't save the kind of money quick enough when they're having kids. So, you know, as soon as you have a baby, all these risks are real, right? But most people, when they have their first child, they're not able to just put in the bank, you know, $300,000, $500,000 for, for this possibility of what happens if, you know, I perish and my child lives and now they need to survive for the next 20 years with, without me there to take care of them. Uh, so that's what life insurance is for. You know, do you have a life insurance policy in place? And I'm not talking about universal or whole life where, uh, you know, life insurance agent is going to sell you the moon and back of the reasons why you should get that. The reality is, is the amount of coverage that you need is going to be so expensive with universal or whole life that most people can't afford that. You need a plain old term policy, 20 year term that you could renew you know, 20 years in, you hopefully stay healthy. So you start when in your 20s and then you renew in your 40s and that's it. You carry it through to your 60s. The only purpose of carrying life insurance is to take care of people who can't take care of themselves. So it, you know, if you have a disabled child or a disabled family member, then you might want to carry more. Um, if you have more children, you might want to carry more, but you definitely want to have a term life policy that is very inexpensive. I mean, I, I pay under $1,000 a year for uh, $2 million in coverage for myself that's going to take care of my kids. I've got five kids, and, you know, that's uh, it's, pro I, it's probably not enough. I probably need to increase uh, my coverage. You know, I, I got that policy before, uh, you know, my youngest two were born. So uh, I only had three kids at the time that I got that policy. Uh, and that's the thing is like, you know, you do it once, you think you're done and uh, you don't necessarily go back and look at it again. Um, but then there's all kinds of other things. And, and because this is a legal community, because you're lawyers, you probably know a lot of this stuff, but I shouldn't make that assumption. Um, and I'm also not necessarily the right person to talk about all of it. But from my accounting background, um, I definitely am well versed in a lot of it. Um, and that is, you know, like retirement accounts. Who's the beneficiaries listed on those retirement accounts? Do you have contingent beneficiaries? Um, contingent beneficiaries, basically, when the primary beneficiary that you name is not able to receive the money because they they are also dead. You know, maybe they died before you or they died with you. Uh, then a contingent beneficiary would kick in, and um, and you can have multiples. So you can have you know two primary beneficiaries with a split, a percentage split. You can have 
three, four, five contingent beneficiaries if the primaries are not available. You know, so for example, uh, let's say, you know, my primary beneficiary would be my wife and then my contingent beneficiaries would be my five kids. So I would want my wife to get the money because I trust that my wife will do with the money what we intended to do. And therefore, uh, it does not need to go straight to my kids who may squander and who may not do with it what I, what it's intended for. And my number one responsibility, I, although my number one core value is family, my number one responsibility is to my wife. She needs to be taken care of. Now, she's able-bodied. She's able to work. So she doesn't necessarily need the money if I were to die. Um, but I don't know that. You know, like what if it's a car crash? I die and she gets badly injured and she can't work. You know, she's going to need that money to survive and to, to raise the kids and and, uh, and all of that. So uh, my primary beneficiary is my spouse and then the contingent beneficiaries would be my kids or a trust, uh, you know, if you set one up uh, as part of your estate plan. Then you want to have an estate plan so that all of your regular bank accounts, all that stuff can be, can be taken care of um, outside of court. You don't, want, you don't want to have to go through probate. Uh, so if you have everything predetermined what's going to happen to it, you know, trust set up, uh, you can you can essentially um, protect all of that from needing to go through and, and honestly just be able to have whatever your wishes are, whatever you want to have happen with it uh, happen uh, it, since you're not going to be there to give instructions. Now, another interesting thing you might want to think about is passwords to get into your various accounts. So, uh, you know, think about what happens if, you know, you were to just disappear tomorrow, right? Um, how would your family be able to log into your bank and, and, and see what, what your financial situation is? How would they be able to, you know, um, uh, talk to your, your friends about funeral arrangements, stuff like that? You know, you're going to want them to be able to get onto your Facebook and, and reach out to, to all the people you're connected with. Um, you know, there's, there's so many examples of this. So basically, if you have like a, you know, a master password uh, software, then, you know, maybe you keep that master password somewhere where and in a safe place, obviously, but where your, your significant others know where to find that. And, uh, you know, maybe you keep a list of all of the financial accounts that you have, whether it's credit cards that you owe, bank accounts that you have, assets that you have. Uh, if you're, you know, if, if you've already started to accumulate wealth and you have real estate holdings or other, you know, other private business holdings, um, you know, those details should be something that you have spelled out. And, you know, it's a tough thing to talk about. It's a tough thing to think about. But the reality is, is that, the what if 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 you die without having the stuff in place then essentially you're leaving the world with one last parting gift to your family of a slap in the face because they're going to have to struggle through to clean up your mess they're going to have to struggle through potentially they're going to there's going to be fighting over your kids there's going to be a you know and, and your kids will get dragged through the mud for it uh you know and then the 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 finances just digging through and figuring out where everything is and and what everything is and how to handle it um it's a huge mess and it is not doing your family members a favor uh if you leave them with that bag to hold so don't leave them holding that bag have it all spelled out, uh, you know, have a, a dedicated place that your family knows this is, you know, they, they don't have to know what's in it, but have an envelope with instructions or have a file with instructions that they know how to access, you know, in case of my death, this is where you go. This is what you do. Um, you know, we're so afraid to talk about it that we don't do simple things like that. And I think that, you know, um, going back to, you know, whether you, whether you want to donate a hundred dollars to these kids and you might be thinking, well, you know, their parents should have had life insurance for them. You know what they may have, and they may have, they may have life insurance. They may have enough money to have everything taken care of, but you know, you know what happens with life insurance? It takes time for that to get paid out. 
there is the life insurance company might look for reasons not to pay. Um, I mean, heck, they you know they were killed, so you know maybe they need to wait for a police outcome to make sure that it wasn't suicide, because then they might not have to pay out the policy, and uh, you know things like that. You know how how it is with insurance and red tape. These kids probably need cash now. They need to be able to to stay in their house. They need to be able to pay the bills. They need to be able to buy groceries. Uh, you know, there's there's immediate needs. Um, this money's not going to go to waste. It's not. You know, uh, we don't know what the situation is. We don't know what their financial situation is. But honestly, we don't care. You know, I was raised do unto others as you would want done to you. And if God forbid something were to happen to me and my wife and our kids were left we would want everybody who knows us to rally around those kids and give them all the support they can get and i know that you don't know them they're strangers to you but they're in our community as in our the legal community you know she had a, a long career uh working in law in um, in law offices and uh, and going to legal conferences and I don't know the extent of her involvement and you know how many lives she's touched uh, and, you know and I don't know anything about her husband either but that makes it more personal you know we could uh, we could share tragic stories here all day long and I don't want to turn this podcast into a platform for for you know for raising raising money but i do think that when uh something comes up that's relevant whether it's relevant because it's something i'm passionate about or it's relevant because it's relevant to our community i'm going to raise it here i'm going to use this platform that i've built for the good for the better good um in you know this in this situation um so just uh, look at yourself and say okay what would i want other people to do if this were me you know, if I was the one, me and my spouse were, were, were senselessly murdered and we left our kids, you know, what, what would we want to have happen? And when you look at it that way, it's easy to go to this GoFundMe page and just make a donation. And if you can't do a hundred dollars, that's okay. You know, you know, you don't have to donate a hundred dollars to, to be entered into this giveaway I'm doing. Um, you know, there's no minimum requirement. I just want to, I just want all of us to exercise our ability to give away money to somebody else in need, and this is somebody in need, and uh, and a horrific story. Uh, but hopefully, from this story, um, you get a little bit more motivated to put all those things into place, to you know take care of some of those things that you've been pushing off, and um, you know you're gonna feel so much more at peace for it and ultimately if something were to happen to you at least you know that this is taken care of and you're not leaving your family with a mess to deal with a mess to clean up and um, you know that's that's all that matters you know all that matters is that our our kids our spouse our you know our family members are taken care of and if you put the right pieces in place if you take the right steps that could be the case so um this was a, a, a bit of a detour, uh, this episode, uh, but I, I, I felt it was important to share. Uh, it's important to share the, the, the concepts. You know, ultimately, I think that, you know, my, my job is helping you to generate cash, helping you to generate wealth. And, you know, we, we're going to get into conversations of, you know, what do you do with, with the money now that you have it? Your, your firm's doing well and you're, you know, you're, you're uh, producing uh, you know, loads of cash, you're bringing home profits. Now what, what do you do? What are, you know, what are, where do you invest that money? How do you grow your overall, uh, net worth and wealth? And when do you decide to give, uh, things like that. So conversations like that are conversations I'd like to have in the future on the podcast. Um, but for today, today, it's all about the Rollins. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash for the kids and please help us on our mission of boosting this effort. Um, I'd like to see the Profit with Law community come in and, and raise yeah, at least $20,000. And again, uh, I'm going to personally match $2,000 to that uh, 
if those twenty thousand dollars get gets raised. The only way I can know that is if uh, when you put the money in, you leave a comment and just um, put a note that it's uh, somebody from the Profit with Law community or the Profit with Law podcast community. Uh, the same information will go out via email uh, to people on my email list. And um, if you want to be entered into uh, the giveaway, we're going to we're going to give away a scholarship for one seat to our 90 day law firm turnaround group coaching program. Um, and that's a seventy five hundred dollar uh, program. And you, it, you can be uh, selected uh, by simply emailing us a, a copy of your donation receipt to info at dreambuilderfinancial.com. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, this Thursday, we've got a great guest interview coming your way. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And uh, until then, just uh, do the right thing. Stay strong and uh, stick with it. With, uh, you know Your goals in your business, that's going to take you far. Uh, but ultimately, uh, helping others, that's what we do. And here's just another way that you can help others today. ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash for the kids. Take care. That's it for this week's episode of Profit With Law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.